Hello, welcome on in. Are you suffering from heavy periods or do you think it's normal to have heavy periods? Today I'm here to discuss with you about heavy periods. So if you're experiencing them, we're going to work out what is a heavy period, what defines it, because I get so many of my clients that come in and they think their period is normal and when we look at the quantity of um, blood they, they're losing, it, it works out that they've got a heavy period and they just didn't realise it. So we're going to have a look into that and we're going to have a look into some of the causes or the reasons why you might be suffering from heavy periods. And did you know it's estimated that about a quarter of the women, um, menstruating women, are uh, suffering from heavy periods and don't know it. It's also called menorrhagia. So a quarter of the women, that's 25%, that is a lot of women to be suffering heavy periods going through each and every day or each and every month thinking that what they're suffering is normal or wondering how they can fix it, what they can do, what's causing the heaviness. It's, see, it's not only the, it's not only the heaviness each month and, and having to deal with it, it's the embarrassment, it's the inconvenience, it's the tiredness and fatigue that might be suffered during this process, during this period of the month. But it also can indicate that there's a um, deeper underlying cause or even a disease condition that's been going on. So don't just sweep it under the rug and think, oh, it's only one week a month or a few days a month I can deal with it it's embarrassing I'll just stay in bed I won't leave the bathroom it's very important that we look at what is the underlying reasons as to what's going on so that we can have a look at what's happening and correct what the correct the issue but firstly what is heavy periods so how do you define whether your periods heavy or not well it's a it's a loss or it's when you're losing 80 mils or more of blood for the whole period, for the whole week, or if your period goes more than seven days. So if you're using a menstrual cup, you can measure that out, but if you're using tampons or pads, then you're going through a super tampon or a pad within a two hour period. So having to change within one or two hours. You see, if you're going through more than 18 super tampons or pads in a, super tampons in a, in a month, oh, sorry, in a week, then that's indicating that your period is heavy and it might be accompanied by some clots as well but that's a heavy period anything more than that 80 mils or the eight um the 16 super tampons in a week so have a look at how much you're going through or if you're using a cup measure out the amount of blood loss so that you can determine the the load of your menstrual flow you see like i said before it's really important to uncover the reasons as to what's going on the reasons behind the heavy period because we're not meant to have heavy periods. It's not what nature intended us to, to have. And some of the reasons that could be happening could be PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, could be endometriosis, adenomyosis, um, fibroids. They can all be physical reasons as to why, but also we can have obesity, insulin resistance, where the body stops reacting to insulin or, or responding to the insulin in your body. Um, excess estrogen and low progesterone so where there's an imbalance between estrogen being a little bit higher than progesterone or there is just there's low progesterone and the estrogen is normal there could be either way it could it's, but it's an excess of estrogen or low progesterone many women when they get to their early 40s start to ch um, find that they're getting changes to their periods and that can be part of perimenopause so again, it's looking at the hormonal balance to address the perimenopause symptoms. There could be uh, an infection or even low iron. And it sounds funny because heavy periods can create anemia, but low iron can also be one of the symptoms um, that creates heavy periods. So it's very important to have a look at your iron status. And then one that's under-diagnosed or un un under, I'm going to say under-related, that's not a word, but it's, it's not seen enough, is thyroid conditions. You see thyroid conditions, whether it be underactive thyroid or Hashimoto's, can contribute to heavy periods. And many women that are having heavy periods don't get their thyroid looked at and so go undiagnosed for thyroid conditions. So it's very important that we discover what's going on with the thyroid so that we can treat that as one of the causes. Because when the thyroid's underactive, it's this little gland that sits in here, when it's underactive or it's diseased, as in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it can lower your progesterone levels. And that's when we can get the heavy bleeding. Or it can decrease the coagulation factors um, in the body. So again, that contributes to the heavy bleeding. 
So it's, it's a really common symptom of Hashimoto's that occurs before diagnosis of Hashimoto's. So it might be your body's little red flag going, not quite coping, there is an imbalance here, um, and your th thyroid disease is being undiagnosed there. So it's very important to check on that. And treatment for heavy periods depends. It depends on what the cause is. So there's no one treatment for heavy periods. There's no one magic supplement or potion or med medical intervention that treats the cause of the heavy periods. It's about looking at what is, what is it going on? Is it, is it the um, endometriosis? And even endometriosis and um, adenomyosis have a relationship back to the estrogen levels of the body. So it's very important to look into what is the causes, what's going on underneath. And when you do that, then you can deal with those, with those causes and you can eradicate the heavy bleeding and get back to a normal life again without having to wonder, am I going to be inconvenienced? Am I going to be embarrassed? Am I going to flood through um, and damage my clothes, wreck my clothes because we've got a flooding event? So if you are experiencing heavy periods, then, it's, then some of the tests that you could do to assess what the causes are is have a look at your hormone levels. But it's not just about looking at one day of the month where you go and you get a blood test one day of the month and you get your estrogen, progesterone, FSH and LH. It's more about looking at the whole month. What is going on with your hormones through the whole month? And that will give you a more comprehensive viewpoint as to your estrogen levels and your progesterone levels and the ratio between. So it's very important to get a, a test done where we measure several times during the whole month so that we can see that pattern and we can graph it out and really see what's happening there and if you're ovulating as well because usually there's a, a an, um, where there's no ovulation happening in the middle as well. Um, also getting tests to check your thyroid and if your TSH is above three then doing some more investigation, doing some more investigation to see could there be something else underlying it. Even though the, the standard pathology tests are saying anything um, below four is normal, that's not necessarily the case. There could be subclinical hypothyroidism occurring before we get to the parameters that the pathology labs have. So checking your TSH, if there is family history of autoimmune disease, thyroid disorders, then investigate the antibodies check those thyroid antibodies and get them tested so that we can look into is there a Hashimoto's condition underlying this that's creating the heavy periods. And if you're overweight, if you've got extra weight, or if you find that you're very shaky if you don't eat meals, get crabby, get hangry, then checking your blood sugar parameters, blood sugar markers to see how is your, how's your blood sugar going. We can do tests for insulin resistance to see what's going on there. And then also looking at your iron status. So checking your stores as well as the circulating iron um, in the body as well. So we can see a full, a full picture of what is going on for your iron. And then also investigating any coagulation factors. Sometimes there is a condition called, and I never know how to say this properly, but it's von Willebrand's disease. And it's a coagulation disorder that is a genetic, of genetic origin. So checking if that has... Um, if that's part of what's going on that's creating the heavy periods. You see, you don't have to live with heavy periods and it's really important that we discover the causes as to what's going on so that we can take control and take health and reverse what's going on because yes, you don't have to live with these heavy periods. You don't have to suffer in silence and embarrassment wondering are you going to be out and about and, and have an accident and not know what to do. We can definitely turn this around and Getting to the core of it quickly will help you from getting fatigued, getting tired, losing your iron, losing like losing a, a lot, of, losing more than 80 mils of, of blood a week can contribute to that low iron stores, which can leave you feeling tired and run down the rest of the month. Let alone if there is any underactive thyroid or Hashimoto's disease going on as well. So it's very important to have a look and investigate what's going on, and don't just think, sit back and think, oh, it's okay the rest of the month. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Teresa Todd, Conquering Health naturopath and biochemist. Bye for now.